This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Okay, well in the previous lecture we went through the arithmetic. Uh, I hope it made sense in using activity-based. Um, there are the costs per unit we ended up with, uh, and the profits per unit. And obviously not always, but in this particular case, um, it did, using activity-based, um, suggested that it was C that was the problem, C should have a higher price, whereas on, activity, uh, on tradition it was A. Um, and I'm sure you can uh, would agree with me, without me needing to say too much, that activity-based is, I think without any doubt, uh, a better approach. Uh, and so, before I say any more, if you look at the last page of the note, um, there's got two things that really go together. It says strengths, weaknesses of activity-based costing. And then an exercise, which uh, I must change this, it's a bit repeating the same thing. But what are the benefits to be, uh, to be gained by changing to a better costing system? Well, um, I think, it, it, I hardly need to say, but I, I do hope it makes sense. Activity-based costing Um, gives more accurate costings. I really shouldn't need to go in why, if you understood my arithmetic, that's perfectly obvious. However, that on its own doesn't mean a lot. Uh, because, don't forget, in our overall profit statement, whichever method of costing we were using, Fixed overheads were 190,000 in total. So, you know, we're going to be charging 190,000, whatever happens. So, who cares that it gives more accurate costings? Well, the reason we care, surely, uh, is that we said, uh, oh, it was in the lectures on the previous chapter, that we want costings. Um, one reason is to fix a selling price. Well, surely, the more accurate the costings we have, the better the selling price decisions will be. Ah, I kept saying, under activity-based, it's product C, which is selling too cheaply, not product A at all. So they're better decisions about selling price. Uh, and also, um, other decision making, not just selling price, um, better decisions based on profitability. What I'm getting at there is suppose I were to tell you that these three products can't be sold for more than 20. You know, we've got competitors. They're selling at 20. If we sell it more, we can't, um, we're not going to sell any. Well, fine. We still want to know the cost to be able to see is each product line profitable or not. If it turns out C isn't profitable, uh, then maybe we should consider not making it, you know, perhaps making more of the other products instead. So uh, it's because if we've got more accurate costings, the benefit of those two things there. The other big benefit or strength of uh, activity-based, and the reason in fact that it was originally developed, I think it was Texas Instruments, first started using this approach. Uh, and uh, the reason was, well, let me write it and then make sure that I explain properly what I actually mean. The other big benefit is it focuses attention on what causes the costs and that I say I will uh, explain properly in a second but what that leads to uh, it leads to greater efficiency
and cost savings. Now, what I mean by that, you see, under traditional absorption, we simply said, what are the total overheads? 190,000, and we did the arithmetic, fine. But we didn't spend any time worrying about why were we spending 190,000 in the first place? With activity based, we're forced to. We're forced to find out what's it being spent on. Ah, 90,000 was being spent on setting up uh, machines, 30th on receiving goods and so on. So we, we're forced to find out where we're incurring the costs. And then we're forced to, find, to, to ask ourselves why. Why have we got five men setting up machines? Ah, it's because of the number of setups we've got. Now fine, once we've found that, we can say, okay, setups. We are having 25 setups. Why? Oh, it's because we're making them in batches. So, A, how many um, are we making each time? We're making 20,000 in total. We're setting up machines 20, 000, uh, sorry, 10 times. So it means we're making them in batches of 2,000 units at a time. What about product C? We're making 2,000, two batches. That means we're only making a thousand each time. Why are we only making a thousand each time of C? We're only making two thousand each time of A. Maybe we've no choice. A special product we can't make with batches fine. That makes C more expensive per unit. But maybe we do have a choice. And if we made them in bigger batches, we'd need fewer setups. And if we have fewer setups, Perhaps we wouldn't need to employ as many men. And of course, if we didn't employ as many men, maybe we could uh, spend less. So that's a real benefit, potentially. Again, it forces us to find out where we're spending the money and why we're spending it. And if we know what we're spending, where and why, then we can try and think of ways of being more efficient, using less men, uh, or receiving, uh, receive bigger quantities each time, you know, have bigger orders each time, so we don't need as many people checking things in and so on. So those are the uh, strengths of activity-based. Um, the big problem not in exams, but in real life, is <coughs> actually getting the figures in the first place, in particular, uh, determining... I can't spell. Determining what causes each, each overhead. So whether you can't or meet this out, I'm not sure, but that's a, a problem that is in real life. Um, that for machining costs, oh, that may be pretty obvious, machine hours, we can do that. But, you know, what about rent of the factory? It's an overhead. But how are we going to decide what's causing the fact that the rent is 50,000? Is it the size of the products? Uh, you know, it's difficult. Uh, there comes a time when it's just impossible. You know, it's, it's a costly exercise anyway uh, to find all the information. But uh, there, there are like to be some overheads where there just is no uh, ideal cause. And so what a lot of companies do, in fact, who, who use activity-based, where there is a sensible cause we can find, like number of setups and machine hours, they use activity-based. But any remaining overheads where we just can't find uh, a sensible driver, then those perhaps have just be absorbed using traditional absorption costs. So things like rent and uh, rent of factory and so on, maybe they'll just do it in total cost per uh, labour hour or cost per machine hour.
Uh, there's pointless wasting time uh, when there, there are no figures to be found. Uh, finally, a, a little bit of uh, terminology. When we ran through the example, we looked to see where costs uh, are incurred. We have these various activities, setting up, receiving, dispatch, machining. We call those the hierarchy of activities. So that's just listing the various activities. So, so uh, hopefully you're with me. For example, um, setups, setup costs, or oh, just set, set, setups. The second thing we do is find the total cost for each activity. So I did say that the setups may be, oh, the wages, the cost involved, maybe the wages of five men we employ. Uh, in addition, there may be the rent of their office or something. So there could be several costs involved. Well, we put all the costs together and it's called the cost pool. So for setups, however many costs were involved in it, the total cost was what? Setups 90,000. Well, there's our cost pool. And then finally, of course, in order to get ultimately um, cost for each product and then for units, uh, we had to determine what causes that cost to be incurred. Well, whatever caused it is the cost driver, which is probably already obvious because the word was used in the question. But the cost driver, well, uh, for setups, the cost pool was 90, the cost driver was number of setups. And there we are. All right, I'll leave it there. Um, go back, read back, back through the note, um, you know, on the first page with the steps to be followed. Go back and check. You're happy that it agrees with what I was actually doing. Uh, otherwise, have a go at the online practice test, which I said before, you can find linked from the, um, the main page of this paper.